Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, we're going to be talking about astrology and the suicide of Kurt Cobain. Now, I'm doing a little, I guess you could say this is a flashback. This is like a, you could say, a very strong retro uh, video. And what it is, is I wanted to do this uh, to see uh, if there's, as uh, far as transits go, natal placements. Uh, and Kurt Cobain's chart, which may have been tied in uh, to uh, his suicide. And the thing that um, many of you may know, I mean, Kurt Cobain was a, a legendary uh, singer, a songwriter. He, some, I mean, he may be seen as somebody that revolutionized the music industry due to the fact he, my understanding is that he introduced this grunge a style of music and I mean he has Uranus conjuncting his, his ascendant which is to me that's the indicator of the innovator right there and it's almost exactly conjunct uh, his ascendant now on a negative side uh, with him he had some my understanding two of them is that he had some destructive uh, health habits and of course that could have a strong effect on the physical body he has Pluto uh, conjunct his ascendant. The ascendant, of course, is the physical body. Pluto can be destructive. It's retrograde, so it's really almost like you could say self, a more you know more self-destructive, which I think was actually uh, transpiring with him as far as self-destructive energy to his physical body. He had done, I'm sure. I mean, alcohol and heroin, and uh, he was uh, obviously he was on. He had done, um, I guess you could say he was a habitual uh, drinker and, and drug user, at least for a good part of his life. It's terrible what went down and happened uh, with him. But I'm looking at his chart. He's a sun in Pisces, moon in Cancer, and Virgo uh, ascendant. And he has a very strong uh, Pisces energy in his chart. He's got uh, four planets in Pisces. He's got Chir he has Chiron in Pisces. And he has two planets in the 12th house, which correspond uh, with the zodiac sign Pisces. Pisces is also the sign that is synonymous with suicide. And he has two planets in the 12th house. Again, uh, that the house of suicide, Pluto, is in his 12th house. That could be an indicator of death, um, death by suicide. Um, and the fact that it's hitting uh, the physical body, I mean, I mean I'm sorry, the, thir the first house in astrology, what I've noticed with people that have a number of people that have Pluto either very close to their sun in their natal chart or it's their ascendant, I've noticed a number of those people seem there's a little stronger propensity to die earlier in life as opposed to uh, younger and, and maybe there's a battle that people are going on with matters connected with life and death. Uh, and these are things, and especially, I mean, and, and people that have placements like that could be doing destructive things to the physical body. If somebody has Pluto by their sun, uh, I mean, the sun can be associated with the physical body. Yes, the ascendant can be connected. I mean, the ascendant is more dominant. And as far as the physical body goes, because the ascendant rules the physical body and the appearance, and people are more inclined to have more debilitations uh, that correlate, that correspond with their ascendant sign in contrast to their sun, but the sun can still play a role in it. Now, again, going back to the fact he's got the sun in Pisces, moon in Cancer, and a Virgo ascendant, well, Sun and Pisces, of course, basic wants can be connected with one's dreams, ideals, and then the moon and Cancer could be something associated with the home and family life. But the thing about um, in bringing those ideals, having that idealistic outlook as far as home and family life goes, his dream may have been to have the, uh, the quintessential uh, family. Now, when I looked at his uh, suicide note online, it was somewhat cryptic, but it was also something where he stated something to the effect, well, I don't remember the exact words in it, that he didn't know if he could be that ideal uh, father, and he probably, maybe he felt he wasn't going to have that ideal family situation. The fact that Virgo is rising, a lot of this energy may have been gone about with a, uh, 
in a more perfunctory, uh, in a more perfunctory, you could say, manner, uh, one that has a little you know, less, a lot less emotions. Uh, you could say done perfunctorily, if that's actually a word in that you know, as far as if I'm saying that properly, pronouncing it right. But the thing about him, um, when I'm looking at Kurt uh, Cobain's uh, chart, another one thing that stands out is that he had no uh, no planets in air in his chart. The only major astrological influence he had in air was his ascendant, and that given that that could actually I'm not sorry not his ascendant his midheaven in Gemini and that of course could be more pronounced and stand out more having that reputation that public image of somebody that can actually uh, be slightly somewhat eloquent versatile verbose be able to multitask uh, being inquisitive uh, and, and those are and those are something but the fact that it's still very little air in his chart period again no planets in air and the ascendant is a non-air sign being in virgo it tells me he might have had certain difficulty in truly articulating these issues regarding his uh suicide now he did have a very uh his suicide note was very extensive very detail oriented which of course i think is that virgo rising energy that uh ma that was manifesting right there now another thing when i'm looking at uh his chart and the and the suicide now uh the thing about it is he does have again that strong pisces uh, that strong Pisces energy. He has uh, the Merc, the Sun, Mercury, Chiron, Venus, and Saturn uh, in Pisces. And when you're the stellium, as far as the series of conjunctions, uh, stellium that he has uh, begins with uh, Mercury, which of course is the mind that could be about suicidal thoughts, and it ends with with Saturn in Pisces. Now. Saturn in Pisces, he has it very close to the 29th uh, degree, and that's a critical degree in astrology. That could signify the fact that it's Saturn in Pisces. Saturn could be about the business career, one ending a career uh, through suicide in some cases. And the thing uh, about this is, and it also I'm sure there was a lot of Piscean self-pity, sadly, when his career did come uh, to an end, he did write something in the suicide note, something about being a poor Pisces, or so it tells me that he probably had certain belief in astrology. I don't know to what extent, if his knowledge was extensive, or he just basically had you know studied the you know the basics or fundamentals uh, of astrology. But going back to his stellium, when you break down the stellium. It's basically, you know, you start out with the first planet. It's a very systematic process. You start with the first planet. Again, going back to the Mercury and Pisces, this could manifest in the suicidal thoughts. Ending with Saturn and Pisces, which could be signifying the end of one, tied into with the end of one's career. And Pisces related, you could say poetry, music. I mean, when he did his songwriting, of course, a lot of the words had rhyming lyrics, I'm sure, uh, to it. Uh, another thing, uh, when I when I look at his uh, chart as well, I mean, having no planets in error, again, that tells me that and there may have been certain difficulty articulating as far as his, uh, as far as what he, he felt in matters connected uh, with his uh, suicide matters, with his uh, drug use, my understanding too is there was apparently this her something hereditary regarding uh, suicide, and, and fa other family members I believe had, had killed themselves by shooting uh, by shooting themselves. He had uh, at the time of the suicide, he had transit Sun and Aries very close to his eighth house cusp. Now that could be that could manifest in the life dealing with life and the fact that the sun could be about life and astrology the eighth house is death in this case he's, he took his life through gunfire Aries can be associated with uh, with gunfire and it's also shining the light on matters uh, with death it's not surprising that this was uh, 
This was a suicide that gained a lot of uh, notoriety and recognition. He has Leo on the cusp of this 12th house in his natal chart. Leo can be, I'm sorry, the 12th, the Leo can be very dramatic attention gaining energy and the fact it's on the 12th house cusp of suicide it's not surprising that he did get um, a lot of there was a lot of notoriety and exposure with this suicide hold on a moment people And the ruler of that 12th house is the sun in Pisces, the sign associated with suicide, and the sun is about our life. Now, the thing about it, too, is he also has eight of the 12 major astrological influences in water signs. So it tells me that he was obviously exceptionally sensitive person, one that was very emotional, one that could be very easily hurt by derisive remarks, uh, ridicule, sensitive, sensitive to criticism, and ridicule, derogatory remarks more so than most. But there's also a lot of intuitive and feeling energy, uh, I believe, uh, as well. And he does have a grand water trine configuration, which consists of Jupiter in Cancer, Jupiter being in its uh, exaltation in Cancer, in the 10th house of the career, and also Neptune uh, can be connected with poetry, even music, in the 3rd house of communication and writing. And he also has that Pisces energy that uh, that is um, that is involved in as well, including um, which, uh, Mercury, Venus, and Saturn. And this is all involved in it. And Venus can be about music, and Venus is also in its exaltation in Pisces. So he did have some certain good placements in his chart. He has the Moon in Cancer being in its dignity, Jupiter, which can be about prosperity affluence in the in, in its exaltation in the zodiac sign cancer in the 10th house of career and also having the venus and pisces uh in that mix it shows me that he was probably into very um abstract uh, art and uh and the and really uh to me very fantastical art uh, as well and I think he did some drawings or paintings like of mutants so there's a lot of art connected with imagination that he was uh, enamored with and he could have actually likely made a career out of it, the fact that it conjuncts his Saturn in his chart another thing I wanted uh, to touch up on uh, too and talk about his chart as far as uh, the suicide he also had transit Chiron in the 12th house of suicide at the time when he did uh, kill himself and Chiron is not just about our um, emotional wounds they could be about physical ones uh, as well he had transit Mars not far from his natal Mercury at the time of the suicide. Mars can be about gunfire. Mercury in Pisces can manifest, well, it can express itself in a very negative manifestation in suicidal uh, thoughts. A lot of um, despondency con connected with self-pitying, feeling sorry uh, for himself, uh, perhaps. And another thing he had, too, was that the transit uh, transit north node and Pluto were not far from his natal Neptune at the time of uh, at the time of the suicide. Neptune can be associated with suicide. It's his natal Neptune falls in his third house, so the suicide's an indicator of suicidal uh, thoughts. And having the North Node being fairly close proximity to it, when the North Node is involved in transit, this can be about uh, issues uh, that one may have to address and confront. And it was an issue that he decided, obviously, to address and confront at this time. Transit Pluto, not far from one's natal Neptune, can manifest in a death through suicide. So... Those are some ways, it's things that I'm seeing in his chart. He just had a number of things natally and in transits at this time of a suicide. And I always talk about, you know, the, the, the stars may impel, but don't come, you know, uh, you know, they don't. Well, what I'm, what I say is, in, in some of my videos, what I'm, what I'm saying in, in my own way is that 
because the stars, I mean, can't really make us do anything, that we still have, I mean, our own uh, free will. They might give us an urge at times that may nearly be ir close to irresistible, but we can still resist it with our free will if we want. There's times, though, when it seems like when you have, like in uh, Kurt Cobain's case, natal placements, transits, that could be so overwhelming they may seem insurmountable and very difficult to overcome and the thing about uh, Kurt Cobain uh, as well I noticed that he has no um, no major astrological energy in fire in his chart when I'm referring to major astrological energy I'm talking about the ten planets the ascendant and midheaven None of them are in, I guess, none of those, none of that energy falls on fire. In his suicide note, he, I don't remember his exact words, but I got the impression what was from what he wrote, that he was losing the drive, the motivation, the exuberance, and the enthusiasm to do what he was doing anymore. He had difficulty, perhaps, in embracing even the adulation and uh, from, from the audience, and he... And when you're talking about when there's no fire in a chart, when there's no fire as far as the major astrological influences go, it may be a person that can lack certain enthusiasm, certain motivation, drive, exuberance. And, uh, and this is where, and it doesn't mean he didn't have any leadership ability. He had maybe difficulty in being that leader. But when you're talking about, I guess you would say he was the lead, the lead uh, songwriter, he definitely had certain leadership prowess and ability, but the thing about it is that energy, when the fire is lacking, it is, it's harder for it to be expressed. So it's not surprising to me that he felt like his motivation, his drive, uh, his desire to do what he wanted to do uh, that he had done for a good amount of time was starting to dwindle and dissipate, uh, sadly. And... And it just, to me, when I look at this chart, it is a chart that shows a really a strong abundance of sensitivity uh, in his uh, in his nature. He also had transit uh, Neptune appear to be in his in his fourth house of the end of life at the time that he passed away. And when you have transit Neptune hitting the fourth, I mean that can manifest in a number of ways. Sometimes it could be uh, the end of life may be coming through suicide. So there were just and, and you're talking about it in the despondent, depressed sign of Capricorn. Now. Based on his age, I'm sure when he died, he was 27 years old. He has Sagittarius at 21 degrees on the fourth house cusp in his natal chart. So very likely in his progressed chart, he had the zodiac sign Capricorn on the fourth house cusp, which could show very depressive, despondent, melancholy energy, feeling very melancholy toward that ladder or end part of one's life where he was feeling certain kind of limitations or restrictions maybe there was responsibilities that were inordinate and that were just too hard for him to bear at the time another thing i wanted to just talk about before i close the video is that uh it's something i'm going off on a gemini moon tangent here there was something some issues that he had that were stomach related and there's some controversy over it. He had a friend that had contended that he felt it was from some heroin use and Kurt Cobain had, had stated he didn't really know that there was something enigmatic uh, going on. I don't remember his exact words, but it was a situation with the, the stomach problem that they that was unfounded and that was somewhat enigmatic. He does have Aquarius on the cusp of the sixth house which could indicate enigmatic health issues one of the rulers is conjunct his ascendant so it's not surprising there was this kind of issue may have affected strongly the physical body he also has jupiter in the zodiac sign cancer not far from a critical degree at 26 degrees uh, uh Ju i mean jupiter can enlarge and expand issues and can't the zodiac sign cancer can be associated with food he has it in retrograde and my understanding was that he was throwing up vomiting a lot of this uh a lot of this food 
Jupiter in Cancer in some cases I could see as exacerbating cancerian issues which wouldn't exclude health related issues. I have Jupiter in Libra in my natal chart making it in conjunct to my ascendant and I've had very uh, strong issues with my lower back and kidney, uh, kidney issues. So anyway in Jupiter is also making a long you could call a uh, a very loose, you know, rather loose in conjunct aspect to his natal sun in Pisces. So this really pretty much what I wanted to get at as far as his chart and the suicide uh, matters go. Uh, Neptune in his third house could also uh, be an indicator of the dissolving or dissipation of the rational thinking. His drug use likely affected his rational thinking more so than most. Yes, drug use can affect a person's rational mind no matter what their astrological placements are, but the fact he has Neptune in the third house natally indicates to me that that was probably more of an issue with him and it affected him in a more powerful manner uh, than most. So, the only other thing I wanted to get at is that I find it interesting at this time of the uh, of the chart is that he has, um, is that not he has, well, I guess you could say he has transit Uranus is not far from his, very close to his north node in Taurus in the 8th house of death. Uranus and Taurus, I could say being associated in some isolated cases as Taurus astrologers, and here I am, I'm a Taurus astrologer, and you could say in a way because I have Taurus rising, and it's conjunct, transit Uranus and Taurus is conjunct, is natal, north node in Taurus, so this was something I guess I was destined to do, it's in his eighth house of death, so I was going to bring his uh, situation out astrologically, so as far as his death was, but anyway, um, Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Learn saying stay well.